months left in this year. I'm going to challenge you with this. Would you pray about leading one of your friends or relatives to Christ before the end of this year? Is that too much to ask? I don't think that's too much to ask, folks. But you be praying about one person who needs to come to know Christ before the end of this calendar year. If you need to take somebody with you, if you need the preacher's help, um, hey, uh, call on some help. But there are people dying and going to hell, and we have the good news. And I'm sorry, but most of us are doing what? We're keeping it to ourselves. The next role in this lineup is pastors and teachers. Um, I had gone through the book of Nehemiah a number of times. In Nehemiah chapter 8, after they rebuilt Jerusalem, Ezra got up and began to read the Word of God. What happened was that the Levites went out among the hundreds of thousands of Jews and, and they explained the Word of God as it was being read publicly. Uh, Folks, that's what a preacher and a teacher does. They explain the Word of God. Uh, Let's think of Philip. Philip was doing a great job there in Jerusalem. A revival was going on. The Holy Spirit told him to go out to the Gaza Strip. What? Out in the desert? Who's out there? But Philip obeyed, and as he was out there, here comes a chariot. Uh, And there is an accountant, um, a treasurer, in the chariot from Ethiopia. And as that chariot begins to pass Philip, he listens and the Ethiopian is reading aloud the book of Isaiah. And the Holy Spirit says, jog along that chariot and ask them a question. And so he asked the man from Ethiopia, do you understand what you're reading? The man says, how can I unless somebody explains it? And Philip got up in the chariot and explained to the man he was converted and baptized right then and there. That's the role of the preacher and teacher. Here's the Word of God. We just kind of help explain it. The pastor is the under-shepherd of the flock. And he's to feed and to lead. John chapter 21. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not. He maketh me to. He leadeth me beside the... Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. There you go. You know Psalm 23 better than I do. Okay, you ready for this? The pastor is to make the sheep lie down in green pastures. Get a good meal. Uh, The pastor is to help the Lord lead you beside streams of still water. The rod and thy staff, they comfort you. That's the word of God. It protects and provides for the sheep. Um, sometimes uh, I've been around bunches of children and uh, these little kids running around, it's like herding chickens, right? You know, sometimes being a pastor is not much different, okay? It's like herding chickens, okay? Sometimes. I'm not talking about you, but sometimes, okay? Uh, If you want to see, look at Ephesians chapter 4 in the first seven verses again. Uh, Why is the Word of God saying about walking worthy of the calling or the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace, one body, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. It probably is because there was some challenges in the church in Ephesus, and they needed to be herded together. But that's what the preacher is to do. Um, Way back yonder, when uh, Jeff West first started coming to this church, he brought his son, Andrew. And after visiting church one time, Andrew said to Jeff, "Um, the preacher is not into preachertainment. The preacher is not into preachertainment. Uh, I, I don't get up here to entertain you. Okay, I come with this. I hope, uh, and I hope I'm getting you to eat and to drink and to feast on this to equip you for the work of the ministry, which is coming up pretty soon. But I, I think Andrew kind of pinned that word. I think he needs to submit it to Webster's, and he might get uh, um, uh, something out of that. Preachertainment. You know, entertainment by a preacher. You ever been there and done that? You ever heard it? All right, okay, there you go. But it's not preachertainment. It's not fellowship. It's not some religious substitute. 
It's the word of God being fed to the sheep that they might grow and multiply. All right, verses 12 through 16, here we go. Growing in unity, uh, all true believers, spiritually maturing. Um, We even read this, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's what we're all after. Uh, Being ministered, the word of God, ministering to each other, ministering to the world, producing spiritual maturity and unity. And when we take a look at this, uh, these gifted people are to lead the church, to equip them, to give them tools. Uh, Kent, I was just talking this morning about your plasma cutter. I don't understand that tool, but it's not a toy. And you told me if you play with it, it'll just take your fingers off and cauterize them. You hardly would bleed, okay? I don't want to touch that plasma cutter. How about you guys, okay? All right? Uh, But it's not a toy. Uh, When the Word of God equips us for the ministry, it's not a toy. Uh, We don't come just to have fun. I think we're going to have a lot of fun in heaven, amen? Uh, uh, We're down here. We're not resting yet. I think we're going to rest in heaven, amen? Right? Okay? Uh, But we're working down here. And so, therefore, when we take a look at this, verse 12, for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, um, uh, the pastor isn't paid to do all the work. Uh, The church calls him and then follows his leadership. And as he, through the word, equips the saints for the job, then discipleship is taking place. Does that make sense? All right. Now, what are some evidences of spiritual growth? And with these thoughts, I'm going to close. First, being like Christ. Well, that's a heavy one, isn't it? How do you know you're maturing? Well, because you're more like Jesus. Okay? Um, We got these, what would Jesus do? Um, uh, Bracelets. And and so we're constantly asking ourselves this question. Uh, Are we doing what Jesus would do? Are we saying what Jesus would say? Uh, Secondly, stability. Uh, The scripture here says not tossed around uh, by every religious novelty or religious quacks, um, false teachings. Um, So we've got stability because we're being fed the Word of God. We know the Word of God. Uh, Thirdly, uh, we speak the truth yoked with love. Uh, Warren, Warren Wiersbe said this, Truth without love is cruelty. Love without truth is a lie. And so when we minister, we speak the truth in love. Um, Gentlemen, uh, be careful if your wife ever stands up in front of you with a new dress on and says, do I look fat in this dress? Um, uh, Be careful what you say. Um, Your jaw is in jeopardy. Okay? Uh, But listen, we speak the truth in love right? Uh, And that's how we go about things. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 6. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. The kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. And then fourthly, uh, are we more cooperative? Uh, Being one body, we need each other. We minister in a lost world together, arms locked. Uh, The body grows just like individual cells grow. Um, We feed on the Word of God, um, and we speak and edify each other. And that's why, folks, when I take a look at church membership, I consider it to be a gift. An isolated Christian can't minister to the body, and the body can't minister to an isolated uh, Christian. Love unites. Selfishness divides. And so, as I've been doing, and I hope to do one more time next Sunday, two questions. What would Jesus do? And is what I'm about to do serving me, or is it serving Jesus and His church? I'm going to ask you to bow your hearts and your heads with me. And obviously, every Sunday we come together, I realize that Many of us are already Christians and we're members of the church and we follow the Lord in believer's baptism. But if that's something that you need to commit to, to trust Christ as your Lord, to join the church or to be baptized as believers in Christ, then we invite you to come and respond. Uh, Otherwise, uh, we're probably all thinking, uh, this week, 
Have I done what Jesus would want me to do? Um, uh, and what I'm about to do, is it going to serve myself or is it going to serve Christ and his church? And so, Lord, as we close our service together, uh, we've spoken of the gift of the Holy Spirit who made some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. And so with that, we pray, Lord, that you would send your Holy Spirit to breathe on us. And help us, Lord, to experience um, a, a new energy in the Holy Spirit as we ask, what would Jesus do? And what I'm about to do, is it serving myself or is it serving Christ and his church? Bless us, Lord, and do breathe fresh on us in your precious name.